Now, I'm going to go ahead and state this right now for the record. I don't recommend that anybody builds this team. Please do not waste one of your crucial weekly fights on an Alvin or Thea makeup just because Charlie said so in one of his videos. Only, it's only game. Why you have to be made? What is up, heroes of Dominion? My name is Charlie. This is Hero War Central. And in this video, I want to discuss a different strategy to attacking Osh the Eternal Keeper here in Guild Raid Phase 2 on Hero Wars Facebook and Web. A little bit ago, I published a video taking a pretty critical and hard look at Hero Wars Facebook and Web, basically saying that team building, diversity, strategy, all of that is effectively ruined because of the solved activity that you have with Osh the Eternal Keeper. There's a set of five heroes that when you use these in conjunction with Albus, you're easily able to do enough damage to not only qualify for the 10 million damage hit, but also potentially beat the level 160 version of Osh, which is the current hardest player versus environment or PVE thing in the game, if you don't count the Water, Fire, and Earth Lords in the Tournament of the Elements. I made the statement, some of you called it clickbait, it is what it is. There's absolutely a solved version of Hero Wars Facebook and Web where you only build nine heroes total and five of them are what you see here. But on my live stream earlier today, I was kind of messing around with my alternate attacks because you know, you have to hit the boss a couple of times. And I just threw together this team right here. I think it was the, yeah, it was the last attempt that I had. And I was, you know, just picking up different heroes, different healers and, and everything to throw them in there. And we, you know, we were just kind of rushing through it as I was chatting with the comment section and something interesting happened. We discovered an interesting mechanic with Osh. Apparently these magic damage attacks are considered basic attacks. And you might say, Charlie, why does that matter? Well, hold on a second. Wait till Corvus kicks the bucket here. Ching Mao is going to die here in a second as well. And you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, Alvinor has an ability that puts up a shield for his ultimate and then whenever the shield goes down any elves get the shield again he's taking damage he's taking damage whatever now ching mao is dead now avanor is out front he's blocking all of those laser beams look at that and not only that but this is going to cause him to speed up his energy gain because of his violet ability look how quickly he's spamming his magic attack artifact weapon i don't even have the artifact weapon leveled up on this hero i don't this is a very low level hero now of course this entire team is super weak I mean, look at it. A couple of violet level heroes. The majority of these heroes are under 30,000 power level going up against the level 130 Osh. But I think that there's something here with Alvinor. In just a second, I'm gonna discuss the reasons why you use Isaac as a tank for that other team. But check it out. Under the forest canopy, Alvinor activates a runic barrier that protects all allies and absorbs 100% of the damage dealt by basic attacks. For whatever reason, those magic attack laser beams are basic attacks. We did think that you needed Isaac and his constant area of effect silence or Aurora and her violet rainbow shield to repel that level of damage, but it turns out Alvinor is gonna do it without any effort at all. The only thing is, is you need to keep Alvinor alive until he gets his first ult off. And when he does, he's gonna gain more energy and he's gonna protect the entire team from those laser beams. Harmony of the Grove. All heroes protected by the runic barrier gain bonus energy for all damage absorbed. All the damage that the shield absorbs, he's getting bonus energy. Those laser beams are doing a ton of damage and you can see that there was three to five of them attacking. So Alvinor and anybody else that's getting hit is getting a ton of bonus energy and after the barrier disappears, it is triggered again on all Grove Keepers. Now, Grove Keepers include Alvinor, Kai, and Thea. And just to quickly go over the rest of Alvinor's skills if you're not aware, his green ability is an area of effects magic damage attack. This does target the defensive spheres and decreases their magic defense, which maybe this is a start of a nice mage team for killing Osh. And you have his heal. Alvinor conjures a rune of life for four seconds that heals all allies once per second. While the rune is active, all allied grove keepers are healed twice as effectively, regardless of the source of healing. Let's take a look at Thea. Thea is one of the other grove keepers that are available on Hero Wars Facebook and web. She's got great heals. Her Valve Silence will slow down the damage output of those laser beam things. Second Wind will speed up all of the allies who get dropped below a certain point. But check out this ability right here. All healing by Solar Sanctuary that exceeds the allies' max health is converted into a shield that absorbs damage. If Alvinor is alive, Thea's ultimate Solar Sanctuary that heals the entire team is gonna put a bonus defense shield. This absorbs all damage, not magic damage, not physical damage, not pure damage, all damage. So between this, Alvinor's own heal, and her other healing beam, her green ability, I think that Alvinor, built properly, can stay alive long enough to get his first ultimate off. Getting his first ultimate off is gonna allow him to 
continually tank all of those laser beams. And I think between the two of these heroes, you have an alternate strategy against Osh. If we take a look at the hero Kai, he's one of the other heroes that got ascended skills. He has his own healing in vampirism. This will be doubled when Alvinor is alive. You have a damage over time attack that will hit all of the defensive spheres. You have this ability right here, again, that will hit all of the defensive spheres. And his area of effect ultimate will hit all of the defensive spheres also. But he also has a magic attack artifact weapon. So we were thinking initially about doing a three Grove Keeper team, because if you take a look at the buffs that you can purchase from the vendor here, there is a buff that will boost your team if you have at least three Grove Keepers, if you have at least three Grove Keepers in it. Grants a permanent buff if there are three Grove Keepers on the team. Each team member has a 25% chance to avoid damage when defense spheres collide with the wormhole. So this is, this is okay, but if you're able to defeat the defensive spheres quickly enough, then this is not a problem. This is possibly workable if you use Kai, but I think that the better strategy would be to find a magic penetration ally. And you can go a lot of different directions with this. I'm not sure yet what the other three heroes are. You have Alvinor and Thea, that's hero one and two in this team build. During my live stream, we discussed a number of other options such as Faceless. Faceless has a magic penetration artifact. Him duplicating any of the heroes, Thea, duplicating Alvinor, duplicating Orion would be a fantastic choice. Of course, Orion is an insane boss killer due to his high and fast damage output, also providing a magic penetration artifact for Alvinor and Thea, and, and of course, Faceless and himself. Again, I'm not sure yet what the team looks like. Alvin or Thea for sure, but I don't know if Kai is the third one or if you use Faceless Orion, maybe somebody else. We were thinking about maybe doing Helios. We were thinking about maybe trying Zhu or Nebula in that team. But I was thinking about maybe trying to build a team that's completely separate from that main Osh killing team. So let's quickly take a look at Isaac and why people consider him to be a pretty solid tank option for the Osh boss fight. His ultimate ability will silence the enemy team. Given that the enemy's primary attacks to the front line is that magic damage, that heavy, heavy magic damage, this significantly slows down the damage output so that your Martha can keep your team alive. You also have this ability right here, and this is why Isaac is able to ultimate so quickly, so frequently. The power capacitor absorbs a portion of any magic damage taken by Isaac and his allies, transforming it into her charge. The amount of charge Tessin gains is four times the energy allies would have received by taking that damage. So all of that magic damage that's hitting Isaac some of it is being converted straight into energy or charge in his case, and he's allowed to continually spam the silence ability. All the while, he's able to use his Tesla Overdrive. This boosts damage output for allies, double for engineers. You're not using Fox or Ginger or whoever engineers in your Osh killing team. This is boosting the physical attack of your Zhu, your Nebula, and your Sebastian, all three of which are contributing to the overall damage output. And then of course you have this Violet ability which does area of effect damage to the enemy. This is what's clearing those defensive spheres pretty quickly. So there are some parallels between Isaac's skill set and Alvinor's skill set. Alvinor has a couple of abilities that will do damage, potentially enough damage to kill those defensive spheres. If you can get his shield up, his initial shield up, then you won't need to silence the enemy defensive spheres, those laser beam things, because he just absorbs all that damage. He just outright blocks it. Not only is he outright blocking it, but it's speeding him up even more, allowing him to put more defensive shields on his allies. Isaac does provide armor penetration for your Zhu and Sebastian, but the bulk of the damage that this team does is in pure damage from Sebastian, so I'm not sure exactly how much this armor penetration artifact is helping. I'm sure it's helping something, the basic attacks. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it contributes on some level, but this ability to continually boost the physical attack of your allies is very similar to how often Alvinor is going to be able to spam his magic attack boost via his artifact weapon. I think that these two heroes have a similar function going up against Osh, and while we have a pretty straightforward team of five using Isaac, Ju, Nebula, Sebastian, and Martha, I believe, 100% I believe, that there is an Alvinor Thea version of this Osh god killer team. Now, I want to go ahead and state this right now for the record. I don't recommend that anybody builds this team. Please do not waste one of your crucial weekly fights on an Alvinor Thea makeup just because Charlie said so in one of his videos. I want to try this out personally because I think it's going to be a fun experiment. My Isaac, Jew, Nebula, Sebastian, Martha team is already doing 15, 16, 17 million damage, enough to qualify me to get the 10 million rewards and to kill the boss that we're chasing every week. So there's less pressure on me to invest in those main five heroes. And I'm very excited to try out something that nobody else, as far as I know, nobody else is trying out. It might even be possible that you don't use Thea with Alvinor. You might slot Alvinor in with Isaac or some variation thereof. There might be a way to slot Alvinor in with that Isaac Isaac, Sebastian, Nebula, Zhu, Martha team, but since that's a physical pure damage attacking team, I don't see it. Since what Alvinor is going to do is boost the magic attack of your team. I think that there's a mage team out there that's going to crush Osh way faster than the Isaac team ever thought possible. I love you all. Good luck in Dominion.